This is Dr. Carroll. This video is about quicksort, which is a commonly accepted general purpose sorting algorithm with a great average case big O. So let's dive in. So quicksort is a classic recursive divide and conquer strategy. So let's go through the different steps. If we're only looking at zero or one elements, then we're done. That's the base case. Then the, the first real step is to choose a pivot. We'll call that P. And it's a value that we're going to pivot the values around. So once we have our pivot, then we get all the values that are less than P to the front of the array and all the values that are greater to P to the back of the array. This is the divide. Okay. And so we could show this with set notation as we have, um, we're going to have P here. Um, and then we're going to have the values less than P. And then we're going to have the values greater than P. Okay. And we, we put P at the front. Then we put the P between the two partitions. And that's going to look like this. The values less than P to the front, P in the middle, and then the values greater than P. Okay, and then we're going to sort each partition with recursive calls. And so if we do this enough times, we, we've put one number in place, but we've divided up the numbers to, to partitions of which they can be sorted into. Now, a key part of this is how do we choose the pivot? Okay, and that, that's an a active area of research. The pivot selection, well, let's go through two scenarios. There's a lot more than this, but we'll just simplify with two. We could, let's talk about a bad choice first. So a bad choice is the first index, okay? Or for that matter, the last index. And one way to remember this is what if the initial array values were all already sorted? That would make one of the partitions here empty if it was already sorted and, and P just happened to be the very, the um, P happened to be the, the lowest value. And that's easy to do because we put P at the beginning of the race. So we might say, hey, we can save a swap and just assume it's that. But we don't want to do that. That's a, that's a bad choice. A good choice would be something like take the median of the first, the last one, and calculate the middle one and figure out, well, what's the medium of the median of these two? The, the median is the, uh, the value that's going to be in the middle. It's a simple, um, a simple calculation, but it avoids the worst case scenario. Let's see in an example here. Here's some random numbers, 71953, and this is our initial array. So step one is to pick up a pivot. So we're going to go with the good choice of pi uh, pivot selection. We're going to look at the median between 7, 9, and 3, well, the median is seven, so we're going to choose the pivot as a, a pivot as seven as our value for our initial uh, quick sort here. Okay, so now we need to swap it out of the way. Swap it with the first value. Oh well, that's itself in this case, but um, algorithm is an al as the algorithm does. And so I'm going to introduce some notation here. First is that. Um, this colon marker here is going to separate the portions here of the values that are less than P and the values that are greater than P. Okay. Additionally, we, we're going to keep track of a marker that keeps track of that it's going to indicate which are the numbers that we don't know if they go to one of these two bins. And so I'll do that with a solid bar. Okay. So the colon is between the less than and the greater than partitions and the solid bar is for the uh, ones we haven't classified yet. So right now, the the two partitions are empty, and everything is unknown. Okay, that we have we haven't looked at. So we're going to go through here, and we're going to put them into the um, appropriate partitions. Now, one is less than the pivot. That means it's going to be in the the values that are are less than p. So we can just advance the two markers. The one to indicate that this, this is the set of values that are less than the pivot. And in between these two markers, well, there is nothing in between them. But if there were, that'd be the set of values that were greater than the pivot. Okay, so let's keep going. So 9 is greater than the pivot. So it's going to go in the values that are greater than P here. So we only advance the marker 
for the unknown portion. So each number we look at, we're always going to advance the, the vertical bar, but we may or may not advance the, the colon, okay? Now, uh, 5 is less than the pivot, and as we did with 1, but I glossed over it, we, we're going to swap it with the first number that's in the larger portion. And that's going to be an easy way to, to keep these sets straight. So we swap 9 and 5. And 9 was the last one in the larger portion. And so then once we swap it, then we can just increment this marker here. And here's all our less thans, and here's all our greater thans. And again, we just move that vertical bar one time each, each, um, each time we look at a number. Now 3 again is less than the, the pivot, so we swap it with the first number that's in the larger portion there, which again is 9. And so now we have 1, 5, and 3 are all less than 7. Notice they're not sorted. They're not in ascending order, but they are um, all less than the pivot. And here is all of our numbers greater than the pivot. And we've moved our unknown bar greater than, uh, moved it up one. And so then we've taken into account all of them for the first pass. Now we're clearly not done. Now we need to swap our pivot into place. And the easiest way to do that, and remember computer scientists are, that's right, efficient. And so we, we don't want to do extra work. So we're going to swap the, the, the last number that's in the, the smaller than section here with the pivot, because that'll preserve it where we have our pivot, we have our less than a pivot, and our greater than pivot. Whew. OK, all that work, and we've got one number into place, guaranteed. We've got the pivot is in its final resting place. Now we make recursive calls. We're going to recursively call the first partition. We're going to recursively call the greater than partition, OK? So first, the, the, um, the, the less than partition. Again, I'm using this uh, dot notation here to say there's really values here, but because we're in a recursive call, we're, we're going to ignore them for now. And we're just going to focus here. But we're truly acting on all with this same array here. OK, so we make this recursive call. First step we do is we pick a pivot of the, the first, the last, and the middle value. Again, just by random chance, the first number here is 3. Uh, the pivot is again in the first location, but that was random chance. Um, and so we swap it with the value in the first location, which again is itself. We initialize our markers, and then we go. And 1 is less than the pivot, so we increment both markers. And here we have 5 is greater than the pivot, and so we only increment the unknown marker. Now the unknown marker is now done with the portion of the array that we're working on, and so now we're done with um, partitioning here, and we can swap the pivot into its correct place by swapping it with the last value in the less than set. Okay, so now 3 is in its final resting place, 7 is in its resting final place, and now we need to call quick sort on the less than partition and the greater than partition for three. And once we get out of the, recurs re the recursive call stack, we need to call it again for nine. So first on one. Oh, and it's of size one, therefore it's sorted. Great. And now we need to call it recursive uh, quick sort on five here. Oh, it's also size one. It's also sorted. So now we've sorted this first partition here. 7 we know is in its right place, so now we need to look at this greater than partition. Oh, it's also size 1, then we're all done. Everything is in its final place. Okay? Now it may look like that took um, a little bit longer than maybe some other algorithms, but I wanted to spell out all the details and keep track of everything for your benefit if you wanted to go through and map it again and to see all the steps. Now look, let's look at the um, skeleton code here. Here we have a call to quick sort. We need to inform it of the array and what portion of the array we want sorted, the first and the last index. We have our base case here, because if, if the two indices are crossed or they're the same, then we're done, size one, okay? So it's only, only 
uh, portions of the array that have two or more elements that we're interested in. First step was to choose a pivot, call it P, and then separate the values into three areas. The set that's less than P, P itself, and then greater than P. Okay? And we'll call that a partition method. Okay? And we need to inform it of the first and last. And from that, we're going to find out where the pivot is. We don't know that ahead of time where the final resting place is going to be. Okay? Then we're going to recursively sort each partition. That means the first set up until just before the pivot, and then the other set the, after the pivot to the last. Notice with other algorithms, we, we needed them to come next to each other, but here the pivot's in the middle here. So we do this set is this call, and then this call is this set, and we know P is in its final resting place. Okay? Well, that's great, except what about partition? <laughs> what does partition look like? So we choose a pivot in partition, and as mentioned, we're going to go with the good choice. We're going to choose the median of the first, the middle, and the last values, and then we're going to set that to the pivot index. That's a whole bunch of conditional statements, so I'll just leave it as that simple line there. This is skeleton code anyway. And then we're going to need to return the pivot index for quick sorts benefit. We also need to swap the pivot out of the way so that we can walk down and, and make the two sets. And so we'll swap it with the first item to get it out of the way. Okay. Now we're going to move one item at a time, that's the vertical bar, until the un re unknown region is empty. So we're just going to, the first unknown is going to be the index. We're just going to go until we've hit the last one. And what we're going to do is move uh, the item from unknown into its proper partition, into the proper partition. Now, if it's greater than the pivot, great. All we need to do is move the first unknown marker. But if it's less, less than the pivot, then it needs to go in the less than partition. And so that's why we have this if statement here. And we're going to move the divider. And then we're just going to swap the, the, the first one that is in the greater than set and where the first unknown is. And, um, and, that'll, and then after we're done with this, then we're going to increment the first unknown. Okay? And that's going to put it, if it's less than the pivot, into place. And, and there we have it. That's, that's partition. Let's look at the call stack for this simple example to get an idea. So we're going to call, we're going to have a, a call to quick sort from 0 to 4, the entire array. And that call to quick sort is going to make three calls, partition, quick sort, and then quick sort. Now, they don't all happen at once, but for visually, I want to indicate this. So we're going to call partition here, and it's going to choose a pivot and put them all in the sets. And then we're going to call quick sort on the first two, on the sorry, in the first three locations here, because the pivot turned out to be in in the the fourth location or index three here. So we don't need to call quick sort to include it. Okay. So then we call partition. That's executed. Then we're going to call this quick sort. We're, we haven't called this one yet, but I'm just indicating it there. And that. And so we call partition again on the first three elements. It's going to choose, it chose the pivot. The pivot is going to end up in index one. And so we need to call quick sort again on that first element. Oh, size one, done. Call quick sort again on the, the third element, done. And now we're all done with the first three elements. We call quick sort on that last element, size one, and we're done. Okay, so let's talk about efficiency here. Quick sort just makes recursive calls and a call to partition. Okay, so so um, that's going to help guide our our analysis here. And this is a intuitive analysis more than a, a more formal analysis. Okay, so on average, there's about two times log base two n calls to quick sort. Again, we're going to assume that n is is a power of two, and if not, the analysis comes out very similarly. Except that notice I said on average here, okay? And partition is going to take order and time. It's, it has to walk through the, the array, and then it, then it 
it does some swaps along the way, but it, it's, it's order n. So what we have is 2 times log base of 2n times n. Well, simplifying that, that's n log n, okay? So now let's talk about its characteristics. Is it stable? No. Those swaps change it from its original location, irregardless of what it, the original location, and it's going to mess up that order for us, okay? Does it, does it take extra space? Well, actually, that the recursive call stack there could get, on the worst case, order end. And that's going to be for all those recursive calls. Uh, the, for the average case, the, the big O is going to be n log n, which is great. And let me just reiterate, this is uh, often considered a general purpose uh, sorting algorithm for its average case. But what would happen if quick sort was called with, say, sorted data? It's going to end up making these partitions that um, are only reduced by one size each call to quick sort. And so it actually would end up being n, n squared algorithm. And that's its major limitation as we have this worst case. Now notice our choice of pivot is going to help make that uh, be further away from that. And that's going to be key to that. But it really does have this worst case n squared uh, big O. Is it adaptive? No, it's not. I also want to point out that there are variants to this. I just want to present a, the simple implementation initially. For example, the three-way partition variation, which is going to improve on some of these characteristics like the extra space and things along those lines. That's it for the video today.